Yeah, basically what starts to happen in these suburban areas is you start to have these, these you know, teenagers, uh, you know, uh, Pinoy teenagers, um, you know, start throwing parties and they start offering, you know, DJ services. And um, it's, it's a hustle. It's literally, you know, it's a job, you know, or it's an alternative to, uh, to a job, you know. And it was a way to kind of come up and it cost money because, I mean, they had to invest in lights, sound system, equipment, records, all that stuff. And um, many of these, you know, mobile DJs and mobile DJ crews, because they were often in, in crews, you know, because it took a lot of people to move all the speakers, to move all of the, um, all of the records, all of the lighting. And it was a big investment in that. And a lot, of, a lot of them initially were able to get their starts, a lot of these crews, by getting their parents or their family to actually invest in their equipment um, in their in their technology initially because they were able to sort of see it as a legitimate business I think eventually I think some some people had to break that ground you know to have some proof there um, but um, you know again um, making records was not an importance here so if you if you can think back all the way back you know weeks and weeks and months ago to when we were talking about early hip-hop DJs in the South Bronx um, you know teenagers uh, you know, who, who, when offered the chance to make records, turned it down because they didn't see it as legitimate and they didn't see it as necessary. And, and much of the same applies to um, the DJs uh, in the mobile scene uh, in the Bay Area. Um, and really, like I said, you know, the crew was such an important thing. So um, <clears throat> one of the interesting dichotomies is once we get into battling, like the turntablist battling part, uh, you know, while the crew is still important, you know, X-Men, the Invisible Scratch Pickles, it also became a, p a part where, you know, um, you know, or the Beat Junkies or whoever, it became a part where, a cultural part where um, you could shine as an individual. So with the mobile scene, it was all about the crew, like the crew, like it wasn't about the individual DJ, the individual DJ skills. It was kind of about how everybody put their party together, the lighting rigs that they had, the sound system that they had, the records that they had, multiple people would DJ, you know, and, and it was more about the, the vibe you provided um, at your parties. Uh, it started to shift, you know, in the late late 80s, mid late 80s to individualism in the sense of like, here's someone like DJ Kubert, who's an incredible scratcher, you know, uh, really stu stood out, you know, and, 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 and other, you know, uh, disc and, you know, Mixmaster Mike, who are incredible scratchers, like they could stand out as an, as an individual. But there's no, there's no, um, there's no reason to like be surprised that some of the earliest successes had by uh, Pinoy DJs were um, what would become the Invisible Scratch Pickles, but were, were called the Dream Team, which was Apollo, uh, Mixmaster Mike, and DJ Qbert, is that they won, you know, the World DJ Championships two years in a row um, as a crew. And before that, there had only been individual champions. So what I mean is, it, it, it because of the, the mobile culture that they came out of, there's no real surprise that when they entered DJ battles, before they had team competition and individual competitions, that the, um, you know, that the, the, the dream team, uh, you know, eventually the, the, the Scratch Pickles, would actually enter as a crew because they came out of this, this mobile disco scene uh, or mobile DJ scene in the Bay Area that was so crew-centric, okay? Um, but, you know, for... Uh, the mobile scene DJs, you know, it was, you know, it was all about like, um, you know, while it was about earning a living, making money, coming up and all that, um, it was also about symbolic capital, the status that you have as being part of one of like the very important, you know, DJ, DJ crews, mobile DJ crews of the time. Um, you know, the social status of being in, in one of those crews. And again, like we're talking about teenage boys. It's about getting girls. You know, I mean, it's just kind of, you know, people often leave that out of the story of hip hop. And that's why I really love how uh, Rebel Kings brings that in at the end. It's like all the, the teenagers in the, in the South Bronx who, 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 you know, once were, you know, kind of dirty, like didn't care, about, have no style in the gangs. You know, they wore their colors and they, they were they were dirty, you know, um, when they went into hip hop, it was about being fly and being fresh 
and that was and having skills and doing all that stuff but it was also about getting the girls like you had the skills you know you you were interested in in the ladies you know so that was also a major part of the mobile scene once that started to fade out you start to have the rise in scratching and turntablism so um once the showcase era sorts of sort of dips out which is the time when it was very crew centric and very important you know um you start to see you know um shortly after that that whole culture kind of that mobile culture kind of dies off and 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 most of the the people who come out of the out of the bay want to get into djing they want to get into scratching they want to get into turntables and they want to get into battling um, um so yeah here's just some images uh again of some uh mobile disco i mean mobile dj crews i always say mobile disco um you know, and you get again. You can see see the kids rocking parties, and again, they'd rock garage parties. They would rock gym parties. They'd rock school dances. They'd set up their own parties. They do, you know, um, you know, auntie's birthday party. You know, what whatever. You know, and then it ultimately got into the you know the turntablist part, which is where we're going to move our our focus to. But I like to talk about that because um, these uh, you know Pinoy. DJs had such a, a, an imp, a crazy important impact on the battling, scratching, turntablism, beat juggling, all these terms we're going to go over today, um, you know, scene in, in the 90s, which went on to influence the scene in the 2000s incredibly, in the 2010s, and now in the 2020s or whatever it is, the COVID era. Um, 